So today I started my Bible in 30 Days challenge to read the entire Bible in 30 days. And I spent four hours reading Genesis 1 through 36. I was reading it out loud, and I think it would go faster if I read it silently, but I want to try it out loud, so I'm going to keep that up for a little while and see how it goes. Reading it out loud, you get to hear it as well as see it. So I began this challenge, and I can say that it has really been a great blessing, just digesting and hearing the Word of God and really feeling like you're getting filled up. I really did sense the presence of the Holy Spirit as I was reading God's Word. I began my day with prayer, and I read the scriptures after spending some time in prayer. And actually, I started this on Wednesday night, April 17, and throughout Thursday morning, April 18, following the pattern of the biblical day, which is the evening and the morning were the first day, and so forth. Now, during my morning reading time, my children got up, and there were a few distractions, so I was kind of walking around the house and reading my Bible at some parts along the journey there. I also ended up getting on my treadmill and walking over a mile while I was reading my Bible. It was really an amazing blessing to get exercise and read the Word of God at the same time. So altogether, I spent time in the evening and in the morning, and then one more stint for about 50 minutes in the afternoon, and I finished up my first day of the Bible reading challenge. This evening begins day two, so I'll be back at it tonight reading my Bible again. Let me share with you something really cool I found in my reading today. This comes from Genesis chapter 35. It's about Rachel, the wife of Jacob. The Bible says here in verse 19, And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. The Bible tells us that Rachel died in Bethlehem, but as she died, she gave birth to her son, and that son was named Benjamin. Now Rachel wanted to call her son Benoni, which means son of my sorrow. But the father said, No, he will be called son of my right hand. You know what's really amazing about this story? That thousands of years later, Jesus, the Messiah, was born in none other than Bethlehem. And Jesus is known as the son of sorrow because he bore our sorrows, as Isaiah 53 says. And also he is the son of the right hand because he sits on the right hand of God the Father. So while we think of him as a man of sorrows, God thinks of him as his own son who sits on his right hand. And this is an incredible prophecy that came out of the experience found here in Genesis. I hope you take this to heart and remember that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. So let's get to know Jesus, and God bless you as you keep seeking him. I look forward to sharing with you more details of this journey as we continue the 30-day Bible challenge. I hope you'll pick up your Bible and start reading as well. God bless you, and I'll see you in the next one.